My name is Glenroy Pinnock. I've been lecturing through um, K to 12 grade and at the university level for over 20 years. Today I am going to introduce you to the introduction of my lecture series which will be looking at linear equations. Now there are three basic types of linear equations, one in which there is denominators and two in which you don't have denominators. Well these would be the simple of all the equations. Now if 2x is equal to 12 and we're to solve for x, it means we're to find a value for x. How do we do that? We should think about getting rid of this 2 over here. But if you get rid of 2 over here, you'll have to do a similar thing over here. So you divide this side by 2 and then you divide this side by 2. In doing that, x will be equal to 12 over 2, which is 6. Clear? Now, this example is one in which there are x values on the left hand side over here and there are x values on the right hand side over here. Or is there x value on the right hand side? The best thing to learn is to put all your x values on the left hand side and keep your numbers on the right hand side. As you can see, there is only one x value on the right and there are two on the left. And there are two numbers on the right and one number on the left. So what you should do primarily is to take this x value over and take this 8 over. As you take a quantity from the left hand side to the right hand side, you will have a sign change, clearly. So 4x plus 5x minus 6x equals 15 minus 13 minus 8. What you will get when all of that is done is that 3x would be equal to minus 6. Notice, if 3x is equal to minus 6, it takes you back to the first example where we add one quantity on the left hand side and one quantity on the right hand side. So if 3x is equal to minus 6 down here, you will manipulate that for yourself. Then x is equal to minus 6 over 3, and the answer for that is going to be minus 2. Now, in the third example here, there are denominators. Then the denominators are 81, 9, and 18. In order to solve this linear equation, we must get rid of the denominators by finding the, by finding the LCM. And the LCM, which means least common multiple for 81, 9, and 18, would have been what? You will have to determine what number 81, 9, and 18 can go into without leaving a remainder. I'm going to let you determine what number that is. When that number is attained, you are going to multiply this equation throughout by the LCM and in doing that, you are basically getting rid of the denominators. So what you are doing in essence is to get this fractional equation being flattened. Flattened, for example, like the first example or the second example. And then when you do that, you put all the x terms on one side and keep the numbers on the other side and then divide throughout to find the value for x. So primarily, I want you to appreciate that the linear equation is coming from a small top structure and then it tapers off into a, a broader base. So this is the fundamental and you must always remember that when you are given a linear equation, whether you are doing the CXC examination or you are doing the United States standardized examinations or the standardized examinations in the UK, you should always break down the equation, which can be somewhat complex so that there is one term on the left hand side and one term on the right hand side. Look at the example in which the denominators are given. 
and here we have x plus 20 over 81 plus 5x minus 3 over 9 is equal to 4 over 18. What we are going to do now is to get rid of the denominators. How do we do that? We do that by finding the LCM. So in finding the LCM, we are going to write 81. We are going to express 81 as a product of prime numbers. What are prime numbers? Prime numbers are those numbers divisible by 1 in itself. Okay? So 81 would be nothing but 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. As you can see. So we have 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 1, which is nothing but 3 to the 4th power. That's 81. Yeah? And 9, 9 is equal to 3 times 3, which is equal to 3 squared. Yeah? Similarly, 18 must be expressed as a product of prime numbers. So 18, 18 is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. Because these numbers, they are all prime numbers. Now, in order to find the LCM, which means the least common multiple, in order to find the LCM, you are going to look for the different prime numbers throughout all three numbers, which happens to be two and three. There are no more prime numbers. Then you are going to take the product of these numbers to multiply. And thirdly, you are going to write the i's power for three throughout. The i's power for three is Four. And the i's power for 2 is 1. Because 2 is 2 to the 1. What do you get here now? You get this as 2 multiplied by 3 to the 4th, which is 81. So in essence, the LCM is going to be equal to 162. So the LCM in essence is equal to 162. So to flatten this equation, you multiply this piece here by 162, this piece by 162, and this piece by 162, or this fraction. What would you get? You'd basically get, look at it, 162 is 2 times 81. So if you multiply this by 81 times 2, what you would get is that 81 cancel 81 and then you will get 2 multiplying x plus 20 yeah and here 9 into 2 times 81 but 9 into 81 goes 9 and 9 2 is 18 so this portion you would have plus 5x minus 3 to be multiplied by 18 yeah and this is now going to be equal to 4 over 18, yeah, multiplied by 2 times 81. And as you can see, a, if this is used to multiply 4 over 18, then 2 into 18 goes 9, and 9 into 81 goes 9. So what you'll be left with over here is 4 multiplying by 9. Now look at this. This is a flattened equation, which is, the, which is one of the objectives of linear fractional equations. We are working it such that the equation is flattened. So now you have learned additionally how to find the LCM without using your calculators. Because in order to be developed as a mathematician, your numerical skills must be developed in such a way that you can work out a lot of multiplication, division, LCM, HCF without using your calculators. So now that your equation has been flattened, there are going to be terms in front of your brackets. So what you do, use this term to multiply x 
and 20. Use 18 to multiply 5x minus 3. And clearly, use 4 to multiply 9. When you do that, you are going to go back to this example where you have x's and numbers on one side. What you should do, keep all the x's on one side here and bring the numbers over such that you will ultimately achieve one quantity on the left hand side and one quantity on the right hand side. Also, remember that as you move a quantity from the left hand side to the right hand side, you will have a sign change. A sign change means if it is negative on this side, on the left hand side, when it goes over to the right hand side, it becomes positive. If it is positive on the right hand side, when it is being taken over to the left hand side, it shall become what? Negative. That must be remembered. Remember your sign change. Thank you very much. And that is all we are doing in module one, which is considered to be linear equations. Thank you.